morning. Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. We're so glad that you're here, whether you're here in person or worshiping with us online. Uh, there aren't too many announcements this morning. Uh, CWF will meet on Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at the church. All women are invited. We have a little uh, study and delicious dessert and usually a lot of laughter. Um, there's not going to be a board meeting in the month of May because the regular, regular board meeting day fell on Mother's Day and that just didn't seem to be a good idea. So, and on May 19th, it is Pentecost Sunday, and it is traditional to wear red on Pentecost, and so you are invited to do so, but if you don't have any red clothing, come anyway. We'll be glad to see you. And now, let's enter into worship. Please be seated. <clears throat> Even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Let us pray. present God you are everywhere even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death we would fear no evil because you are there but what happens when we see darkness fear fills our heart and we stop walking. What we do is we try to turn and run, hesitate, wonder, and sometimes we are paralyzed by fear. Today as we come in your presence, we ask that you will 
open our hearts and our eyes so that we would know and feel your presence everywhere, especially when things are dark and scary. And we would keep on walking, keep on walking. And if we walk, we would discover who you are, taste your goodness. If we keep on walking, we would bear fruit because you abide in us and we abide in you. <clears throat> if we keep on walking and we bear fruit, we cause you delight and we do the work that you have called us to do to be a kingdom people to do your kingdom's work on this earth as you govern in heaven be among us O oh God fill this house of worship with your presence may we yield to your voice and be obedient we pray that prayer for the church, that the church would keep on walking and never be afraid because you would guide us, deliver us, because you have done that in the past and you will do it in the present and in the future. We offer our personal prayers and our personal lives before you. May nothing stop us knowing that your power is mighty, your power is above all other powers, your power can overcome darkness, your power can over overcome fear. Give us courageous hearts. We pray for our world there's so much violence, much of it is unnecessary, most of it is what we create, cause us to return to sanity, cause us to be your people, give our leaders wisdom and strength, May they lead and govern in ways that people can live without fear. For those who are poor, people who have forgotten, for all those to whom Madison Avenue Christian Church shines as a beacon of hope, we pray at this time. Continue to lead us, guide us, for those in hospitals, people who are recovering at home, we pray. We join with those who ask for a miracle in their lives. Be with us throughout this worship service. Hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from John 15 verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. 
you are already made clean by the words which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples.
Let me outline this text in a paraphrased way because there are parts of that text I don't want to linger on because I don't think it applies to us. And that part is, if you don't abide in me, you will not bear fruit and you will wither and die and be burnt up. None of us are here because we don't want to abide in Christ. So, let me get that out. The rest of the text. <laughs> the rest of the text reads something like this. Here's the mapping of it. <clears throat> and the scripture goes, I am the vine, you are the branches, and God is the vine dresser. And if you abide in me, and I abide in you, you will bear fruit. That is, in essence, that scripture. If I abide in you, and you abide in me, that is the state of existence of people of faith. That is the gift of grace for people of faith. I am the vine, you are the branches, God is the vine dresser. Homiletics has already done the work on talking about what a vine dresser does. I thought I'd use it as a reason to take a trip to Napa and figure out what a vine dresser does. But they didn't give me the chance. They've done good research on that. The vine dresser looks at a branch that does not produce and does not look at it with contempt nor does the vine dresser reject the branch because it is not producing any fruit at that time because God sees what is possible what we can become that is God's grace and that's God's goodness so what the vine dresser does I believe is <clears throat> starts gently pruning. Oh, we don't like that, do we? We would rather God just say, you're okay, I'm okay, we're all okay. But no, God is intent on seeing that we bear fruit because God abides in us, we abide in Him. We are the branches, branches that are attached to the vine. The first pruning, I believe, is not radical pruning. It's gentle pruning. I don't know which days God does that to me, gentle pruning. Kind of on the edges, so that the branch does not die. And the vine dresser waits for the next season to see what happens. And it may not be a big yield, it may be a small yield. Then starts radical pruning. God prunes deep. The vine dresser prunes deep. And the next season rejoices because the yield is so wonderful and because the vine dresser knows that the vine to which the branch is attached is a healthy vine is not worried about what can happen in the future that is what a vine dresser does that is how God works in our world in our lives not just to say, you do whatever you want to. If a gardener just says, you do whatever you want to, the weeds would take over and there would not be any more yield. What the vine dresser does is carefully look at how to bring forth yield in us. That is not just true about our personal lives, that is true about the church too. 
God, the vine dresser, is constantly in the business of pruning. Pruning so that there would be a yield. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you would bear fruit. Oh, I believe the vine dresser does something more than that. What is fascinating about this material and the real life of a vine dresser is how much care and how, how much value the vine dresser places on the vine and the fruit that it bears. I believe there would be some branches that would dip down and come into the ground. And when that happens, all the mud and dirt and everything would cover those branches and it would suffocate it. Have you been there? We've been there. Sometimes life gets low and all the dirt and mud just covers and suffocates us and we are not able to breathe freely to see all the goodness that is around. The vine dresser walks around the vineyard with a bucket in hand full of water and picks up those branches and pours water on it, wipes it clean, takes all the muck out of it, lifts the branch up gently and puts it on a healthier branch and lets it go up again so that it can bear fruit. This vine dresser will not yield, will not ignore, will not give up, is constantly interested in seeing how this precious branch would yield fruit. That is the nature of God. That is how God cares about us. We often talk about the love of God. It is not a love that is a mindless camaraderie. It is a love that prunes, that washes us clean, that lifts us up, puts us on a healthy branch because the vine dresser knows we would yield. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you would bear fruit. Abide in me, attached to the vine. To be attached to the vine. I would want to believe this is a disciple missionary, but I don't know. A missionary in some corner of the world had a small clinic this was before there was all this electricity lines everywhere, running water and all. So the missionary got a small generator to power this clinic so that they can do the lab work and all that. And of course, there was light because of the generator. A guy would come there every day and he would keep looking at that bulb burning. He was fascinated by the bulb burning. So when the missionary's work was done and the missionary was ready to leave town and come back, the missionary called that guy who was looking at this bulb always, took the bulb and gave it to him and that guy was ecstatic, happy. He ran from there. The missionary finished work, came home, after a year or two, he went back to see what is happening. When he went back, the guy to whom he gave the bulb was no longer so happy. He just kind of looked at the missionary with disappointment. And then the missionary and the guy walked to his house and there was that bulb hanging from a thread right in the middle of his living room. 
and he was so disappointed because it was not burning. You need the source of power. Jesus said, if I abide in you and you abide in me, you would bear fruit. There is no hope in any other unless we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. The branch takes on the nature of the vine, takes on the quality of the vine, takes on the taste of the vine. Those of us who know that to taste and see that God is good, know that if God is good, then we yield good. If God is not good, we cannot yield good things. God is good. If I abide in you, you abide in me, you'll bear fruit. And the rejoicing is not just for the vine dresser. The rejoicing is all those who taste the fruit and know the goodness that comes from God. Abide in me as I abide in you. Joy would fill your heart and joy would fill the one who made you in God's very own image. To God be honor, power, glory and majesty now and forevermore. Amen. Please join me in the offertory prayer. <clears throat> Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our resources and our patience, and our lives, that we might make a difference in our community. We ask this through your Son, who gave all, that he was, that we may know a fullness of life and spirit. Amen.
be seated. The aspect of communion that I relate most to is that of remembrance. I keep remembering it says so right on the front of our table. As we prepare to come to the table this week, my suggestion is that you might think about one of your earliest remembrances of a communion service. So I'm going to let you do the meditation for yourself this week. It could be your first communion service after you were baptized. It could be a particularly meaningful service, maybe at a summer camp or another time in your life. Or maybe even before you could officially take communion. My earliest recollection of a communion service is of this last type. As I've told some of you before, I was four years old, long before we arrived at Madison Avenue Christian Church. My mother had to stay home with my sister who was ill that morning, so she sent me to church with a piece of candy wrapped up in a handkerchief so that I'd have something to do during the communion service. As luck would have it, my four-year-old hands could not untie the handkerchief. So during communion, I boldly walked to the front of the church and up the steps to the pulpit and asked the minister for help. He could have scolded me or ignored me, but he welcomed me and accomplished the task. Of course, it helped that the minister was my father. <laughs> Possibly your recollection has a bit more theological meaning, or maybe not. I encourage you to do your own meditation as we sing our communion hymn and prepare for Jesus to welcome us to his table. Let us sing. at this table. Let us pray. 
God of grace and God of glory, we are indeed grateful that we are welcomed to this table each week. We know that you will abide with us as we go through this communion service of remembrance and as we go through the coming week. Bless these emblems and may we derive the strength and motivation to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Words of Institution from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please drink with me. If you're 
visiting this church for one of the first times, it's easy to look around and see people like myself and say, gee, they've probably been here since the Great Depression. <laughs> for a few of us, maybe. But I came this week to a fascinating realization that some of you have figured out also about the lay leadership of Madison Avenue Christian Church. Of the nine current department chairs, seven of them were not members of this church ten years ago. In fact, most of them not even seven years ago. Although it may take a few weeks, this is a church that welcomes and values and loves new members. If you've been attending in church, uh, attending in person or online, and this is the week that you would choose to officially join this church and continue your journey of faith, come forward as we sing our closing hymn, or you may meet with the minister at another time. Let us sing. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Let nothing stop you. Fear can be overcome. Darkness will not prevail because Christ abides in you and you abide in Christ. Peace be with you. Amen.